This country is still controlled by men in systems that were set up by men that are carefully crafted to continue to benefit men. So to put it in women hating terms, you'll understand you're being hysterical. Are JD Vance's comments about cat ladies really a problem or are people just being too sensitive? Well, in this video, I'm gonna break it all down. Welcome back to the Devore Darkens show. My name is Devore Darkens. You already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel so we can get this video out to more people just like you and me. Now, JD Vance, who is the person that President Trump has picked to be his VP in this upcoming election, has been getting a lot of heat because of a three-year-old comment that he made when he was being interviewed by Tucker Carlson when Tucker Carlson was on Fox News. That's how long ago it was. Yes, I know. Anyways, uh, before we get into the videos, let's understand something. I'm just trying to figure out in this video. Is it really a problem what he said or are people just being too sensitive because we got people from Hollywood speaking out on this and the media, you know what they like to do. They like to take a clip in the past and bring it to the present and use it to spin their own narrative. So before I go any further, let me play this video. Jen slamming the Republican nominee for vice president in a rare politically charged and headline making post to her 45 million Instagram fans. We're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies. Her anger spawned by his resurfaced, gone viral comments on Fox News from a 2021 interview with Tucker Carlson. Who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made, and so they want to make the rest of the country miserable too. In her post, Jen got personal. Mr. Vance, I pray that your daughter is fortunate enough to bear children of her own one day. I hope she will not need to turn to IVF as a second option because you are trying to take that away from her too. It's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. Ahead, it's a safe bet the friend star won't be there for JD at the polls this November, saying, I truly can't believe this is coming from a potential VP of the United States. Okay, so you guys seen that, right? I mean, Wow. I mean, she really took the time to take it that personal to comment on what he said three years ago. And I guarantee she didn't even watch the full clip of the interview to get the full context because that is the world that we live in. Now, before shooting all of my videos, I watched the entire video. So I have a great idea on what the context is of what we're speaking about. And in this scenario, what we're speaking about is the fact that most people that are in leadership roles in the government are individuals who do not have children. Where J.D. Vance is coming from, you have to understand is how did he grow up? Where did he grow up? He grew up in an area where you where people, they marry, they have kids, right? And that's a big part of their meaning of life in that area of the country. That is a fact. There, there's That's not an offensive statement. That's like saying Vice President Harris was a DEI hire. That's not offensive. That is a fact. She was hired because she was a person of color and she was the first woman vice president. He clearly stated that's why he he put her on on the ticket. So, again, I just think we live in a world where people are too damn sensitive. Now, before we go any further, why don't we let the man explain what he really meant? Let's play that video. I know the media wants to attack me and wants me to back down on this, Megan. But the simple point that I made is that having children becoming a father, becoming a mother, I really do think it changes your perspective in a pretty profound way. This is something, of course, we've recognized for hundreds of years in this country that human civilization has always recognized. But there's a deeper point here, uh, Megan. It's not a criticism of people who don't have children. I explicitly said in my remarks, despite the fact that media has lied about this, that this is not about criticizing people who, for various reasons, didn't have kids. This is about criticizing the Democratic Party for becoming anti-family and anti-child. We have to ask ourselves, Megan, why do we have masking of toddlers years after the pandemic ended? Why do we have the Harris campaign coming out this very morning, Megan, and saying that we should not have the child tax credit, which lowers tax rates for parents of young children? It's because they have become anti-family and anti-kid. 
And I'm proud to stand up for parents, and I hope that parents out there recognize that I'm a guy who wants to fight for you. I want to fight for your interests. I want to fight for your stake in the country. And that is what this is fundamentally about. The Democrats in the past five, ten years, Megan, they have become anti-family. It's built into their policy. It's built into the way they talk about parents and children. And it's time that we call that out. I don't think we should back down from it, Megan. I think we should be honest about the problem. Okay, so you guys seen that amazing clarification, right? Understand He's preaching on the most important part of our society, which is being able to grow our population, our birth rates, right? And right now in today's world, most people do not want to get married. Most people do not want to have a kid, right? This whole generation has a misconstrued idea of how valuable, how meaningful, right? How rewarding it is to get married and have a family. They have the opposite perception and there's legislation and politicians and celebrities and Hollywood and the movies and social media that is backing up that perception, but it's not grounded in reality. If we want to figure out why in our country are we having so many issues with the younger generation? Why do they lack financial literacy? Why are they not able to truly build wealth? Why are they not able to maintain relationships and know how to communicate? Why do they not know how to lead? It's because of the nuclear family. Most people are growing up in a single parent household. So what J.D. Vance is speaking on, it's facts. And it's kind of one of those things where don't shoot the messenger just because you didn't like that he mentioned cat ladies. But it is true. This is also related to the talking point in the red pill environment, especially online, where there's a common theme where you're either going to do one or two things as a woman if you are not married and you don't have kids. You're either going to get a dog and die alone or you'll probably have a bunch of cats. Is that is that offensive or is that just the truth? Right? I mean that's like saying, "Devore, you're short, man. You're you're only 5'10." Is that offensive or is that the truth? Right. So, I mean, it's listen, people are just too damn sensitive. And he's so dead on that. We need people to be getting married. We need people to be having kids because it changes your outlook on life. And I really do believe our purpose here is to expand, is to grow, is to have purpose and meaning. But even though you know what I'm saying is true, when it comes to politics, it doesn't really matter. They have a narrative to stick to. And that leads us to this video. Childless cat ladies, um, Joanna, uh, the Daily Beast, uh, of course, which you oversee, has written a lot about this because this is this has really taken off the last couple of days. It's really taken off, propelled by an Instagram post by Jennifer Aniston, um, who is not someone that normally gets involved in politics, actually. And what's so fascinating about her is obviously she's America's sweetheart. She's saying, Mr. Vance, I really hope that your daughter, Mirabelle, doesn't get caught up in an IVF cycle because you're trying to take that away from her, too. Um, and she's got 50 million followers on Instagram. And also, she's the sort of person, because everybody's watched Friends, and she is a friend to many Americans, uh, that it reaches out beyond the news cycle. So so people who aren't interested in news, who aren't news junkies, who aren't following this like crazy, actually get touched by the campaign. Okay, so you guys seen that, right? So the news is just going to run with this. They're going to keep pushing it because remember, these news channels are propaganda puppets for the Democrat Party. There's no question about it. Okay, these are facts. Just look it up. How much money, okay, do these news organizations donate to the Democrat Party? versus how much they donate to the Republican Party. It's not even a comparison. That's point number one. Point number two, and she is true about this, right? Jennifer Aniston, 50 million followers. Everybody knows her. I don't even have a problem with her, actually. You know, I was I was pretty cool. But when you take his comment out of context and you try to twist it into an IVF statement, which really has nothing to do with what he said, okay? In fact, if you really want it to be true and you really want it to make an impact Politically, you should have took his statement and said, hey, women out there, if you really are on the fence about having kids, here's why you should have kids, because it might change your perspective. But listen, someone who's triggered obviously isn't going to do that. 
and they have no interest in finding out why he said it. They would not send him a message or give him a call. See, we don't live in those times today. That's what I really would hope. Sometimes when people, and this is you included and me, if we get offended by something or we have a problem with someone, why don't you just pick up the damn phone and call them and have a conversation? Maybe it's not what you thought it was. We have to understand that in this social media world, in this news world, it's all lies. None of it is true. So that's what these people have been doing ever since J.D. Vance was announced VP. You know what they've been doing, going through every part of his life. And you know what? We're doing the same thing to Kamala Harris. So it goes both ways. That's fine. I get it. But I do want to obviously highlight the bias of the media and how triggered people really get. So as I wrap up this video, I want to say this to you. You know, is it really a problem what he said? Absolutely not. We live in a country where saying what the truth is, expressing what the facts are, people will find offensive. And they find the thing offensive that usually is true. Like I heard, I heard a quote today. Black people only get offended at what the truth is. But when you lie to them, they're okay. Right? So it is true that we have the highest abortion rate. Go out there publicly and say that and see how many black people get triggered. Right? But I digress. I'm going down on a rant. But that's what's happening. Right? That's where we're at. So I don't see it as a problem. I just think people are too sensitive and they're getting caught up in what the media is saying. Right? And they're, allow and they're allowing the media to control how they think and how they feel. And because Jennifer Aniston really doesn't have any time to do her research, she's not going to call J.D. Vance and say, hey, what did you mean by that? She's going to just take that clip and run with it. And that's why we have a lot of people in this world that are confused. They go out there and they vote because of how they feel, right, without doing any research. And then the results start rolling in and they're shaking their head like, what the hell's going on? It's because you failed to do your research. But that's my mindset on this. What is yours? What do you guys think about what Jennifer Aniston said and how triggered she got over these comments? What do you think about J.D. Vance's comments? Do you think they were legit? Do you think they were truthful? Or do you think they were really offensive for a lot of people out there? Well, I want to hear what you got to say and more in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. Stay grateful, stay strong, and stay true. Peace.